Okay, so Junior Roberts here again with realjuniorroberts.com. We're on to question two of the January 2020 CSEC physics past paper. I've done question one in a previous video. If you haven't yet watched that video, I will post a link in the top of the description of this video so you can go ahead and check out question one. So let's go right into question two. So the first thing they want us to do here is to define each of the following terms, right? And the first term we're given is specific heat capacity. So we're going to give the definition for the specific heat capacity, right? So we'll say that this is, is the heat energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram we have to be specific and say one kilogram because it asks for the specific heat capacity so this heat energy is related to specifically one kilogram of the substance so we're going to say to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree right so the specific heat capacity is just the heat energy that is required to raise the temperature of a one kilogram of a substance by one degree now let's move on now here they want us to define specific latent heat of fusion of ice so we're going to say that this is the heat energy required to to change one kilogram of ice All right so I can actually say one kilogram of solid ice to liquid without a change in temperature. Right. So essentially, the specific latent heat of fusion of ice is the heat energy required to change one kilogram of solid ice at zero degrees to liquid at zero degrees. Because what we're saying is that we experience a change in state without a change in the temperature. All right, so that's the definition for the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. So let's move on. Now, this here says that part B in the question says a block of ice, which has a mass of 2.5 kilogram and a temperature of minus 10 degrees is placed in a container. All right, now, we're given some constants here. We're given the specific heat capacity of water as 4,200 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Well, in this case, 4,200 joules per kilogram per Celsius. The specific, heat capa specific heat capacity of ice is 2.1 times 10 to the 3 joule per kilogram per Celsius. And the specific latent heat of fusion of ice is given here. Now, the question wants us to calculate the heat energy required to change the temperature of ice at minus 10 degrees to ice at 0 degrees. So we're going to look at the heat energy change. So we're going to use a formula which says that EH right, is equal to MC times the change in temperature, right, where M is the mass of the substance, C is the specific heat capacity of the substance, and delta H is simply the change in temperature. All right, so the mass we were given was 2.5 kilograms, so we're going to say 2.5 kilograms multiplied by the specific heat capacity, in this case, of ice. So the specific heat capacity of ice is 2,100 joules per kilogram per Celsius, so we'll say 2,100 joule per kilogram per Celsius. 
right and the change in temperature uh, that the substance undergo it was a change of from minus 10 to 0 so delta T then or the change in temperature is equal to the final temperature which is 0 degrees minus the initial temperature which is minus 10 degrees Celsius these are Celsius so 0 minus minus 10 give us 10 degrees Celsius so the change in temperature is 10 degrees Celsius so we're going to say multiply by 10 degrees Celsius All right now if we call on the services of our calculator and say 2.5 multiply by 2100 multiply by 10 gives us an answer of 52,500 joules All right so our heat energy that is required to change the temperature of ice from minus 10 to 0 degrees is 52,500 joules. All right, now if we scroll down, uh, the questionnaire says that we are to calculate the heat energy required to convert all the ice at 0 degrees to water at 0 degrees, right? Now since we see here that we have a constant temperature which indicates no temperature change temperature change we will have to look at uh, latent heat All right no temperature change no temperature change All right we will have to look at latent heat right because remember latent heat deals with hidden heat Right, so it actually indicates uh, a change of state without a change in temperature. So, in this case, since we're going from ice, which is a solid, to water, which is a liquid, liquid, we're going to look at latent heat of fusion. Right. So, to first of all, let's set up a formula to relate the heat energy and latent heat. So we're going to say that E is equal to M L F, right? Where E is the heat energy required to change the state of the substance. M is the mass and LF is the latent heat of fusion, right? So we're going to say the mass uh, stays as before. And let me just double check. Uh, the mass is 2.5 kilogram, right? 2.5 kilograms, and the specific latent heat of fusion is 3.3 times 10 to the 5 joules per kilogram. So, mass again is 2.5 kilograms, right? And the latent heat of fusion is 3.3 times 10 to the 5 joules per kilogram. Right, so let me just double check here. Right, so here all we simply need to do is to request the services of our calculator, and we will simply say 2.5 times 3.3 times 10 to the 5. Right, and that will give us an answer of 80, 825,000 joules right because what we'll have is uh kilograms this kilogram will cancel this kilogram leave us an answer of 825,000 joules right which we expect to be the unit of energy now we can scroll further right and the question says the water in the container the water in the container is now heated to a temperature of 80 degrees celsius by an electrical heater in 600 seconds so what we have essentially is let us say this is our container right and in the container we have water right now the temperature of that water is at zero degrees celsius because earlier we melt the ice at zero degrees to water at zero degrees so the temperature here would be zero degrees celsius and let us say we continue to apply heat 
to that mixture and then uh, what will happen is uh, we will actually start to see the water starting to bubble up right so what we're left with is let us say we have our container here again right and we're gonna have this water here uh, with kind of boiling right so it's indicated by these bubbles right right so and uh, the temperature here so let me just indicate um, both temperatures the temperature here would be zero degrees Celsius while the temperature here would be 80 degrees Celsius right so they want us to calculate the power output by the eater now we know from before that power P is equal to the energy converted or the, or the work done over the time taken right now in this case we're looking at thermal energy or heat energy so we're going to use the formula which says that EH is equal to MC times the change in temperature right times the change in temperature uh, and that will be divided by time right because this MC delta T relates to the energy supplied by the heater and T indicates uh, the time that the energy was supplied so I'm going to start to fill in the values so again the mass was 2.5 uh, kilograms the specific heat capacity of water is 4200 joules per kilogram uh, in this case they gave it to us as celsius and then the change in temperature would be from 0 to 80 so that's 80 degrees celsius and the time that this heat energy was supplied uh, was for 600 seconds so we'll have 600 seconds right so what we'll end up with is when we take the numerator let me just get the calculator so we'll take the numerator right and we'll say 2.5 times 4200 2.5 2.5 times 4200 times 80 gives us an answer of 840,000 joules right and we'll divide that by 600 seconds right so we'll divide by 600 seconds right and then we'll get an answer of 1400 uh, watts right so that would be the power output of the eater 1400 watts now if we go further the question here says that uh, we are to state one assumption uh, which must be taken into account in C1. So let's look at C1. Right? So in this, in C, we are actually considering the heater supplying heat energy to the water, which results in a change in temperature of the water. So one assumption that we can make is that the energy supplied by the heater supplied by the heater by the heater is not lost to surrounding surroundings all right so essentially what we're saying is that all the heat energy uh, supplied by the heater goes into changing the temperature of the water so therefore there is no heat energy that is lost to the sur surrounding so all heat energy goes into changing the temperature of the water so again this is junior roberts with real juniorroberts.com if there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on please post it down below in comments send me an email and i'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you like this video if it was helpful Click subscribe and share so others can benefit. Thank you for watching.